sell me this pen. Have you heard this sentence? It's actually a quote from The Wolf of Wall Street and it is about classical sales approaches. In this video, I'm going to explain to you why this classical sales approach does not work. Hey, my name is Armin L. Rao. I'm the founder of A. Leonard Rao, the entrepreneur's entrepreneur, and I'd like to help you to become a great leader. If you don't want to miss any of my contents, please click on the subscribe button below this video and don't forget to switch on the bell so that you're not going to miss any updates. If you like the content of this video, please feel free to share it and to like it. That would be really great. Thank you for that. Today's video is about sales and about the modern way of sales and why the classical way of selling the say Jordan Belfort way or the push sell way does not really work. At least it does not sustainably work. Now there are actually four reasons why people would not buy from you. The first one is they are not interested in your product. So for, exa for example, if we're taking the pen example again, they don't actually use pens, you know, they don't write anymore. They do everything digitally, which is coming more and more with the digital generation. The second reason why they wouldn't buy is they just don't have the budget. If they don't have the budget, forget all the objection handling techniques that the normal gurus try to explain to you like uh, but if you get them if you if you pay for the service or the product now you will save even more in the future if you don't have the money it's a question of cash you don't have the money you can obviously offer alternative forms of paying such as leasing or renting um, this is a different kettle of fish then but in general if they don't have the budget if they don't have the money they won't buy and to be quite honest if they are not interested in your product and if they don't have the money there is no point in selling to them unless you want to sell them something that they are going to regret or something that they don't use so I am not a supporter of these kind of sales techniques reason number three for not buying is they do not believe you. They just do not believe that your solution, your product can do the trick. And reason number four is that they do not believe that it, that it will work for them. Now, in the sales that I promote, you, as I said before, you can't really do anything about reasons number one, number two, they are not interested, they don't need it or they don't have the budget, but you can actually do something about reasons number three and number four, which means that they might be interested, they do have the money, but they just don't believe you and they do not believe that it works for them. Now, what the classical salesman actually does then when, they, when one of these reasons occurs, first of all, after praising his product, his service and his solution, he's going to go for some closing techniques, like for example, painting a drama scenario, like for example, now imagine you want to sign this contract and you don't have a pen. You know, that would be really critical if you are in a critical situation. A second a closing technique might be a shame close where they say, oh, a man or a woman of your standing should actually have a high class pen. What would you, what would your family, your friends, your customers, your team say about you if you don't even have a high class pen? That's something like a shame close. Or they would also try to flatter you and they would say, um, somebody who is in such a, an exposed position, who has so much power and who is so handsome should also have a beautiful pen so that it really goes well with your stature, your position, your beauty or whatever. Now these three things uh, are clearly manipulative and I am not a big fan of using them. What you can do in order to sell your things and you as an entrepreneur you will still have a lot of customer contact is you prove 
that your solution, your product works. That's the objection number three. And you also prove that it works for, 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 for them. And that actually works by, first of all, understanding the customer situation by asking a lot of open questions. Like for example, now tell me a little bit more, how does your supply chain work today? Um, could you please um, explain how exactly your marketing is set up today? How many people do you have in marketing? Who is your target group? What are the communication means that you are using right now? And what are you doing about research? So you understand and understand and understand and you're also asking your customer about potential challenges. What that does actually is it builds up the trust because you're interested in your customer. You're not talking about your pen or your product in this case all the time. You're interested in the problem and you are trying to understand. You show empathy, ask, ask, ask. Afterwards, you say, listen, if I had a solution for you, would you be interested to hear about it? And if the customer then says yes, what you need to understand then is which criteria have to be fulfilled in order for your customer to buy. So you ask, so, and which criteria would my solution, my product have to fulfill so that, that you would buy it? Now you get the initial, you get the various criteria and you then match every point, every criterion with features of your product, your service or your solution. Later on then, you ask if you can then do the next step and maybe go for a demo or um, even, you know, close the deal and um, that will then end your sales cycle more or less. So you drive the dialogue by asking questions. You investigate the situation by understanding the criteria that have to be fulfilled. You then match the features of your solution, your service, your product with the criteria. And at the end, you also examine, that is something that I have not explained, that you examine if you have actually understood everything well. And that is the D, that is D for drive, I for investigate, M for match, and E for examine. That's the dime method that I created for uh, effective sales. And that is why you really need to go through that instead of just praising the features and the benefits of your product. Don't forget your customers are going to buy through trust, through believing that it will work for them. So here, for example, you can show showcases of other customers where it is working already and you will only sell sustainably and have long lasting customer relationships that are very positive by applying this dime approach that I recommend to you. If you want to know more about selling more and selling more profitably in your business, if you want your team to understand how they can sell more and sell more profitably, feel free to apply for a private consulting session. Underneath this video, there is a link that you can click and we will then have a chat. It's not about selling you anything. It's just about, you know, going through your challenges and coming up with a plan on how you can sell better and sell more profitably by not applying the classical Jordan Belfort approach about sell me this pen. The life program actually teaches you all the tips, tricks and tools and methods of successful entrepreneurship and successful leadership of your startup within weeks. This was Armin L. Rao from A. Leonard Rao, the entrepreneur's entrepreneur. And don't forget, lead yourself.